I've never really felt that I was the only black person, which is a really weird thing to say. Showcasing how you react to your situation can be your own choice. And if you are the one that's different in a room, don't ever suppress your voice. So you've had a special key in your career that has unlocked amazing, interesting opportunities. And so we're gonna reveal what that is. It's 2012, you're engaged to your now wife, yeah. about to set up life for yourselves in yeah. London, and then you get, not a call, a text. Uh, there's a job, I'd really love you to take it. It's in New York and I, I need to know today. He had to know today if you... Yeah, man. That happens, and I went back to my desk and I messaged Ali and I said, Blake wants us to move to New York. This is your fiance, Ali. Say, yeah. And she said, TikTok is in the ad business. I look after the team that supports the sales teams to help articulate to brands and agencies why they should be using TikTok. If you look at my CV, there is nothing in my CV that suggests I'll qualify for the role. I never thought I'm not ready or I can't do this job. It was, this is a very new opportunity for me, which is a mindset I've taken all the way through my career. You can learn, grow and progress if you follow what you see as an interest. So stay focused, don't think too linear and who knows what you can win next. You're incredible, do you know that? <laughs> That's the money sort of Greetings, I'm Ashley Samuels McKenzie. And I'm Charles Parkinson. And welcome to How I Became. Where we unveil the unscripted journeys of inspirational figures. This is our first live audience. Yeah. So give yourselves a round of applause. Amazing. They're real claps. If you can't, you can't see them on video, but we have a real audience here. They're not, it's not sound effects right there. And we're here with the one and only Trevor Johnson. Welcome, welcome. Oh, oh, he's that himself. <laughs> so we're gonna hear your life story. How I Became, if you don't know, is our podcast and interview series where we, we interview inspirational figures like Trevor Johnson and we unveil the stories of how they got to where they are. And Trevor, you are TikTok's head of marketing for go global business solutions. Not only that, Global Advisory Board Member of Soho House and an independent non-executive director for the PFA, the Professional Footballers Association. Indeed, yes. We're going to find out the story of how you got to this position. And but first, we're going to hear from the main man, Ashley Samuels McKenzie. <laughs> so for every podcast, I create a poem for our guest, summarizing their life in a eight bar, so who is yours, Trevor? Early experiences in school, fraught with a lack of diversity, empowered him to embrace difference and to not see it adversely. Showcasing how you react to your situation can be your own choice. And if you are the one that's different in a room, don't ever suppress your voice. While at Facebook, he saw its rise of users start at 60 million to having a user base of almost half the world to three billion. We are live at Cannes Lions, how I became. This episode is just a quick stop. Welcoming Trevor Johnson, head of marketing and global business solutions at TikTok. Great, I just welcome. I've never, I've never had someone write poetry for me before. So you, you can call Ash every morning and he can give you a poem about your life. Huh? I'll let the wife know. <laughs> so you've had a special key in your life or well, in your career that has unlocked really amazing, interesting opportunities. And you've consistently delivered on those opportunities and um, succeeded very well in, in your career in life, of course. And so we're going to reveal what that is later, but we'll start, as we always do, taking it back. Ash, we'll kick us off. So you mentioned to us in our um, earlier interview that at the school you went to, you were one or two of maybe people that looked like yourself and you were able to take that and make it an advantage. Please tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so thanks for inviting me to this podcast. So I, I grew up in a very white middle-class area called Pinna. Um, it's best known for where Elton John was, was born and, and raised. Uh, it was a school of about 1,200 people, uh, and I was probably the only black guy in that school. Um, 
uh, and we'll come back to that because I never really felt, I never really felt that, right? I never felt the the difference. And there's a couple of instances where where maybe that 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 changed a little bit. Um, but I was, I was in the last year. I was head boy there. I went to uh, another school in the same area. It was sixth form. I was deputy head boy there. Um, but yeah, it was. It's one of these moments where you you look back, and I I never really I never really felt that I was the only black person, which is a really weird thing to say, which is uh, something which transcends my life actually. That in many spaces I have been the only black person there, but it's never I've never really felt that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I um, mean, it's not really uh, impacted me. I've never, I, I've never been stopped by police. I've never felt racial um, uh, discrimination in work. I've never, never in the streets. But there's a couple of key things that I, I think are, are, are really important. One, there was a moment at school where I realized I was different. Do you know the film Rocky about the boxers, right? Mm. Um, we used to play Rocky in, in, the, in the playground where we used to pretend to fight. We did this a few times, and then one day I, I said I wanted to I wanted to be Rocky, uh, and they said you can't be Rocky because you're you're black and he's white. Um, but what that meant is that every time we played Rocky, I would lose because Rocky always beat up the black the black the black boxers. So that that was a moment where I was playing a game where I couldn't win because I was black, um, and that's one of those rare moments where you really it's, it's sort of a a, a, a refresh or a a, a moment of 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 realization that you are there are things that happen to you because of your color um and, and i couldn't i couldn't play rocky to go up because i was oh, and i never played rocky again because i couldn't win this this the second the second moment is that as i said i've never i've never gone through life and i'm in this very fortunate position where i've and i don't know why where i've never really experienced racial abuse but i feel like i'm a black man right i i work in i walk into shops and you act differently if you're walking down the street late at night behind someone, you cross the road. Um, if a police car drives up next to me, despite the fact I've never been spotted and I've drive, driven some nice cars, I feel a tension there that it may happen. So I'm conscious of being a black person, despite the fact I've never really experienced that. Um, so it's always there. But as you said, I, I sort of think it, it's, it's, it has been an advantage because it's been different. And I've, I've sort of taken the fact that I'm the only one in the room and despite all of the diversity efforts in our industry and all of the chats, I still am a lot of the time the only person, the black person in the room. But it's about using your your voice and, and people listen, right? Particularly now, if I'm the only black person in the room, um, rather than stand in the corner and not say anything, I, I speak up and I use my voice and I use the power that, uh, that I have in that position. Um, and it takes a confidence to do that. I know why people don't. Um, but for, for me, it's always been an advantage at school, uh, through my career uh, and where I am now. Uh, and and my, only, my only ask, if anything comes off the back of this, is that there's a, lot, there's a lot more black people in our industry, not many at the senior levels, but realize that when you're, if you are the only one in the room, use that as an advantage and use your voice to tell people what's going on, ask questions, be a nuisance, all of those sorts of things, because now is a moment where we can, we can do that, and we can use our voice as power. And that's a really long-winded answer to that to that question. But there's a, there's a few things that I just wanted to make sure that we landed. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure, extremely valuable. Any any advice for someone who's listening to that and uh, wants to know how to really feel that 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 confidence and strength and seeing their position as an advantage. It's really hard because it really depends on the environment, and also I'm I'm very, I'm 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 uh, radical tri radical candor is 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 part of part of what, of what I am and and how I live my life, right? Very open, very transparent, not rude, but I I, I like asking hard questions, and uh, and as people, some people in the audience know, if there's a question that the room doesn't want to ask, I'll be the one that ask, asks that, um, and that comes with experience and confidence, so it's not easy. But just having the awareness that uh, you have a responsibility, you have an opportunity, and as long as it's constructive, as long as it's valid, um, as long as it moves meetings, conversations, projects, whatever it is forward, I, I think that that people should have the confidence to 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 speak up in those in those meeting rooms because otherwise you're you're there in the corner not saying anything, and then it builds up inside, right? Yeah, I'm sure the amount of people that 
that know that if you don't say anything and you say, oh, I, you either wish you said it or you're frustrated that you don't, you can't say it. But I, I, I implore anyone to have their voice, be open and transparent. Radical candor is how we can really start to move businesses on and move our, move our, uh, our positions on and, and, and people of ethnic minorities or uh, minority audiences or women or whatever. I think it's, 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 we just have to be confident in, in using our voice. Yeah, for sure. So you use your uniqueness as an advantage, your head boy. Yeah. Uh, but I tell too many people that. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing, doing very well. Um, we're gonna, we, we've got a shorter time than we usually do. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Um, you have a life changing moment in 2008. But tell us, if you could give us a summary of, of, of your life up to that point from the school, how you got there. Um, yeah, try I, and do that. Good everyone, luck. everyone always asks me about my, my career path or uh, my career ladder, but I, I've, I've, never, I've, never, I've never had a career. I've never known what I want to do, right? I don't think about my career as a, as a path or as a ladder. Um, I've had some great bosses, but I've never looked at their, them and wanted their jobs, mm. right? It's always been a path of pivots and we call it a jungle gym where you're you're moving sideways to go up or learning new experiences so all the way through my career it's all there's always been massive shifts so when i went from university to to uh, ipsos it was because my my mom worked at ipsos i got a job in the post room they have a graduate training intake they take 20 people on i, I spoke to the md and i was number 21 because he's like why are you working in the post room so i took i took that job as, as a graduate trainee and then I went from there to Ernst & Young, and I went from there to AOL, and I went from Ernst & Young to be a consultant, I went to, uh, to AOL to be a researcher, and then a strategist, uh, and then I left AOL, um, took voluntary redundancy, and then I was traveling, then I got a call from Facebook to, to, to go to, to Facebook, and then that's where I met, that's where I met the, the who, who's been my sponsor for a while, Blake. And, right, and I got a job at job at Facebook, and I was there for for twelve years. So not that fast. We are going to cover some of that. Um, we 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 yeah, we'll go back to you. You're in Argentina. Yes. You're having the time of your life. Yes. Taking a break. I told you that. So yeah, I'm taking a break. Uh, and one of my best mates, Tracy, had gone over to to Facebook, uh, and then she uh, uh, she she they were looking for people to recruit uh, and they uh, they rang me and they said were well, you literally backpacking up a mountain I like literally but I was literally backpacking I wouldn't take the call actually I didn't take the call you didn't so, take no, the call I didn't I, I got missed call got missed call like, oh, and there's messages on there and then I got a call from Tracy she's like take the call <laughs> and I was like okay fine and then I got a call from Facebook I flew back from Argentina but hold on they, they said uh, we want you to do this job, and you. I don't still, know what job. It, I, to be honest, I don't know what job it was, but. But you still got a load of your travelling to do, right? No, so I I flew back from Argentina. I did the interview, and then flew back to Brazil. So you came back yeah. all the way for the interview, yeah. And then we're like, right, I'll get my backpack, and I'm going to carry on travelling. Yeah, then yeah, then I, and then I I start the job about a month after. How long yeah. did that interview last? Fifteen minutes. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. And that this is with Blake, who's <laughs> been a real key, you know. Yeah, so this, so this is this is another thing, right? There's a different. So people want mentors, right? There's a difference between a mentor and a sponsor, right? Mm -hmm. a, a mentor is someone that they're part of your life, but they're a, a strategic advisor, and they 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 will guide you, and you can talk to them about about things. But a sponsor is someone who is invested in your development, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's mutually beneficial for to be that. It's someone who will talk about you when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. They will advocate for you whilst you're not in that room. Um, so everyone can have a mentor and we should definitely do that. Not everyone can have a sponsor, but a sponsor has a much more impactful um, uh, impact on your on your life than than a mentor will. Because a sponsor, the right sponsor will really, really, really push you forward and they will they will create opportunities that you're not even aware of. Did he know you before this? He had the interview with you? No, no. And in 15 minutes, he said, you're high. He, no, he, he, that, 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 that interview was 15 minutes. Right. And there were other interviews after after that. But, but the one with him was 15 minutes. The brown. So, nothing like, but what did he see in you yeah. to make him go? So just, yeah. I mean, it was a, there's a moment in time where Facebook was trying to, trying to, to build. It was very early on. So they were trying to just get talent in the business. How many 
employees were in Facebook in the UK when you joined? Uh, six. Six. Oh, wow. And how many users did Facebook have at this point? Uh, 50. I think 50 million. 50 million users. And when you left 12 years later, how many? Users? Yeah. 2.8 billion, I think. Wow. So you saw Facebook go from 50 million users to how many? 2. 2.8 billion. 2.8 yeah. billion. Oh. 12, it was 12 years. But then but the, the pivot from Facebook to TikTok was, was probably the, 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 bigger, the, bigger, the bigger pivot. For sure. Um, before that key moment, which we will get to, you have another massive moment. And New York. Yes, to right. really, yeah, I'm building up to it, the excitement, <laughs> anticipation. Um, <laughs> so you, uh, you're, you're engaged, it's 2012. 2012, yeah. You're engaged to your now wife. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're about to set up life for yourselves in yeah. London and maybe thinking about kids and all this. And then you get not a call, a text. No, it was, I was, I was in New York for a, um, uh, an offsite. Right. I was working in the, the global, global team. I was in New York for an offsite, uh, and then I, uh, I had a chat to Blake, and he said, uh, "There's a job. I'd really love you to to uh, to take it. Uh, it's in New York, and I for I need to know today." He had to know today, if you, <laughs> yeah, because we needed to tell the client on that day. And you have uh, to. This is where you, New York. So this is where you know you're with the right sponsor and the right woman, right? Because um, that happened, and I went back to my desk and I messaged Ali, and I said, "Blake wants us to move to New York." This is your fiance, Ali. So, yeah. And she said, I guess we're moving to New York, mate. So that's how it's like that. Those moves yeah. still. <laughs> so that's because that's, that's when you know that those 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 moments are so people in your life that are looking that 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 know the moments that, that matter, that that are supportive and you'll do anything for. Obviously I'll do anything for, for my wife and then yeah, Blake wouldn't have asked me if it wasn't a big opportunity. So then so then so you've you're leaving a role now that you've been in for twelve years. Yes. Well, I had many different roles at, at Facebook. You know, again, that, 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 that's the whole uh, the whole jungle gym, right? If you looked, if you looked at my, if you looked at my career, for how many jobs I did it, there were very different ones, and they are jumps, not linear. They're not one linear moves; they are jumps and up to. What right. what different departments did you work in then? What was your uh, strategy, planning, agency development? I uh, I did operations for Instagram, which was my last my last um, my last role there. Okay, lots so of different roles. That's twelve years in a few few seconds. Yeah. There, now we get to the next moment. Yeah, and what was this role that you were offered? And did you feel where? When you, where? Where? At TikTok. At TikTok, right? So the role I have now um, is global business marketing. So that TikTok is in the ad business, right? Um, we sell ads, uh, and I, I look after the in within Europe. I look after the team that supports the sales teams to help articulate to brands and agencies why they should be uh, using TikTok and how they can be using TikTok to drive business results. And uh, so I was, I was brought over to, um, to, to set that up. But if you, if you, if you look at my CV, uh, it's a marketing role. There is nothing in my CV that suggests I'll qualify for the role. Mm. Quite how did Quite that, free, right? how did it feel when, when you got the offer and you're looking at the job description, you're like, I'll tell well, you, so there's a, there's, ready a, there's, for there's, a, there's a difference between the job and and what needs to be done right and mm -hmm. so um we were building an organization to do things that we'd already done in previous in a previous organization mm -hmm. and so and um, one of the first things i did was bring in uh really strong leads so if i knew i was i needed to build a creative team i built i brought in a really great creative leader b2b marketing team a really great b2b marketing leader a, a brand strategist really great person that understood tom's planning and that sort of stuff because those are the people that are going to build the, the right teams. And my job is to bring that all together and articulate that back to the business, understand the, the growth of the business, work closely with the sales leadership, uh, education training, uh, strategic support guidance, bringing all of those entities together. So I trust my leaders to lead. And then I bring together the, the street strategic um, uh, uh, glue to make sure it's as impactful to the business as possible. Uh, cross region but also we work globally as well so we have global entities as well so my job is to ensure that we are executing in all of those uh, disciplines across um across the 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 europe and helping ensure that we are supporting our sales teams to accelerate uh, revenue growth um and their job is to run those disciplines mm -hmm. um so i i accepted the fact that 
I'm not a B2B marketer. So yeah. bringing in a really great, great leadership team. And, and we've, got, we've got an amazing team that do some amazing work. And I, I think that, that we work together really, really well. So what is your advice for someone who, who gets a job offer and they feel like, I'm not, I've never done this before. I'm not ready. I'm not, not oh, feel don't, qualified. Don't, don't, don't ready. Okay. The question D it was, it was, I've never done this before. I'll figure it out. Okay. That's the mic. But other people was so not. I know, because I know where the company needs to go. So mm -hmm. I know the things that need to come together yeah. to, in, to enable that, right? And so it, I never thought I'm not ready or I can't do this job. It was, this is, this is a very new, unique and new opportunity for me, which is a mindset I've taken all the way through my career, right? It's right. something that I've always, I've always applied. That's why I've had these pivots and jumps. Um, and, and it was just a bigger, a bigger execution of that moving from Facebook, Instagram to, to TikTok. Well, I think that we've unveiled a bit of what makes, what's made your success is you don't, yeah, you don't feel like which other people do. I'm not ready for this. You see this as a new and unique experience of learning. And that's the advice maybe for people who do see an opportunity and think, no, that's not me. Actually see it as, but it's, but, and again, it's, not, and it's not brand new learning either. It's, yeah. it's, it's building on capabilities, skills, understanding, insight, vision that you already have, and just adding, adding more to it. So, um, the, the fact that I'd worked in so many different business divisions at, at Facebook and then coming to, to TikTok, mm -hmm. I could, I, I could take that learning because I know what, where we needed to go. I may have not had direct experience in the thing I'm building, but the, my experience means that we are building the right thing for success going forward. Mm, that makes sense. Definitely. You, I think you seem to, you know what you're really good at and and not everybody I don't, does. Yes, I think I do know what I'm really good at. But it that sounds like. I know what I'm interested in. Okay. I know, I, I know what I put time, effort and resource into. And you know what? I think I know what I'm good at, but I don't, I don't think in my, but the mindset isn't I'm good at this. Yeah. It is this is interesting. I can leverage this and I can, I can do that got you that makes sense it does yeah yeah definitely um what is it like to make a decision to leave a company you've worked at for 12 years again for someone listening who maybe an opportunity comes up a big opportunity um to work at an amazing brand but they've you know you've worked 12 years somewhere you know everybody you're comfortable there you've got status you know how things work how did you make that decision because it's a big one because everything that you just said just then is it's like okay that that's all done now so it's quite easy it's a quite easy decision because i've done everything i knew everybody i've probably reached reached the 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 extent to to the 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 individual value that i could i still add value to the business but not at the extent that that it was previously so everything you said that people would would, would view as a as a as a negative those are probably the reasons why i moved over as well as the amazing opportunity that TikTok had as well, right? I mean, it's just an incredible, it's, a, it's an incredible company and the, being able to come in and, and do something new and unique and, and build a team and uh, and help grow, not not from a consumer side, but from a commercial side. And, and TikTok is just an amazing place where the consumer proposition is very similar to the commercial proposition. So you can just take the creativity and joy and all of the stuff that you love when you're using the platform and articulating that to brands and, and agencies, that's just that's just a really exciting opportunity, right? And it's one of the only it's one of the few platforms where the consumer proposition and the commercial proposition are so tight together. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really exciting. I think there's a definite theme here where you seem to always see the the positive side of a situation where it's very easy to see the negative, whether the fact that it's your one of the few black men in your school. You saw the advantage in it and you, you used that and it was great. You, whether it's, you know, you get a job description that you haven't got the qualifications for, you don't feel like you're not ready. You're like, great, new opportunity. I can deliver my value. I think it's probably self-preservation for instance, you. <laughs> because if I don't think positively, then you think the other, you think the opposite. There is, mm -hmm. there is, there is some, I speak about this to my wife all the time because she says I have a knack of empathy, <laughs> that stuff. but I think it's because. I think it's a self. I think it's self preservation. I think I force myself to, to look at the, uh, look at the the more uh, constructive rather than positive, more mm. constructive side of things, and and think and think that that direction, rather than consider the other side. Mm. And what would you say keeps you motivated day to day? 
think you've got quite a important job and you work with a lot of people under your remit. What what is it that keeps you kind of sharp? Uh, I just and this is going to this is going to sound very corporate, but it, it's it is adding value and 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 making a difference. And if you come in every day and there's stuff that you're doing that that makes like feels like it's having a difference, that it's that. So when you get to a point where you come in and nothing, it doesn't feel valuable or it's not valued or it's just going through the motions, it's just not. That's the motivation is is that. But there's a lot of work to be done, and to show show an achievement in in what needs to be done is makes me motivated. Uh, which is very easy to do at TikTok because we we do have well we did have bi monthly planning cycles. We now have got quarterly planning cycles, so you know very very quickly if you're making a difference and you assess yourself on a very regular basis and and the impact of your team and you create projects or drop projects very very quickly. So you always know that you're being made accountable to to deliver impact, which is uh, which is great, right? And it's why we're we're we're, we're growing very very uh, uh, very well. Uh, and it sort of suits it suits me because it means I can uh, assess my impact on a regular basis. Excellent. I want to ask. Lastly, we all have a little voice in our heads, and it might be saying good things when it might be saying bad. What's yours like? That's a good question. I, I don't. I don't. I don't really have a voice in. I'm sorry. I don't really have what, a voice in my head. What kind of things do you say to yourself? Do you think? Like, what's the it's always it's always it's not but it's always constructive i very i i process and i, and I analyze a lot right i'm always always thinking i'm always there's there's i'm very analytical so there's always things going on in my head and most of the time what's going on in my head goes out comes out of my mouth anyway <laughs> right most of the time it's 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 in there and it comes out and there may be a little bit of a uh a filter but it's yeah that's what happens most of the time Number. So whatever's in my head, you'll hear. Good. Okay. So we're gonna end with another poem to summarize. Two poems. Yeah, wow. two poems. In this Thank poem, you would have seen me scribbling. This is a poem that I make live oh, while you're talking. Tell them what you said. So, hope you've all enjoyed it today. It's a very express how I became in half an hour. And here's the poem to end our session today. A career of shifts and changes. What a wild ride. Sharing encouragement to all to speak up and not let that pressure build up inside. Now a leader in the tech world that appeals to all nations, feeling the benefits of sponsors in careers and the right people for applications. Knowing who you need in a team can be the key to success. And also picking the best leaders can bolster your confidence and live with less stress. You can learn, grow and progress if you follow what you see as an interest, so stay focused, don't think too linear, and who knows what you can win next. You're incredible, do you know that? <laughs> That's amazing. You keep this. You suck, so you the boy. Thank you. That's great. And Look. there we have it. Thank you, everybody, thank for coming. You. Thanks, Trevor Johnson. Yeah, thank you.